Well, it's the first time I get to preach in 2022, so I'm going to give a New Year's message as well. <laughs> and I know you've had two out of Pastor Ian, but here's the third one <laughs> coming up. It's that time of year when we fit in uh, to our lives these things called New Year's resolutions. Anybody not make a New Year's resolution? Oh, there are some of you. Okay. Well, that's, that's probably a good thing. But there's some of us who are infantile or uh, less, <laughs> less likely to recognize what happened last year that try to decide we're going to do things. But normally by the second week of January, we've already abandoned those things. I mean, let's be honest. How many of you who did make resolutions have stuck to that diet? Because that's normally number one, isn't it? I'm going to eat less or eat better. I mean, how many actually stuck to the diet? What about exercising? I'm going to exercise more, you know. Every day, and the first day of January, you get up and you go for a walk. And the second day, you get up a bit later and go for a walk. And by the third day of January, not sure that this exercise is actually causing any weight loss significantly. So we may as well not do it anymore. <laughs> what about sticking to your new... Bible reading schedule. Come on, how many of you decided, I'm going to read more of God's Word this year, and already it's kind of pushed out and pushed out and got a little bit less and a little bit less. Well, I want to tell you, I'm determined this year it's going to be different. I've made New Year's resolutions that I'm convinced I will stick to for the whole of 2022. Resolution number one, I'm going to eat more. And resolution number two, I'm going to exercise less. <laughs> Guaranteed not to fail in my resolutions in 22. Anyway, why do we fail? Why do we generally fail when we make these decisions that we're going to do something differently? And really the answer is just that fickleness, just our humanity is, is, is the reason, the cause of that. Uh, it's our human nature not to stick with something, especially something if it's good. Sticking to the good habits, fighting the flesh, established ways of thinking, etc. Generally, these don't have good outcomes because it's much easier to go the way of the flesh than it is to go the way of the Spirit. So, <clears throat> as believers, we have a, a different kind of hope, though if we're going to make resolutions, and I'm going to encourage you this morning to make two, and I'm going to share those with you. And our resolutions are not based upon our human response. They're not based upon our, human, our humanity. They're based on something a lot greater. In one who never changes, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, today, and forever. I've no idea why the screen's so small. I'm sorry, I didn't check it beforehand, so you'll just have to put up with it for this time. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 2, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. Therefore, brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. So as we enter 2022 with some trepidation in our abilities to stand firm, with, with clear experience in our minds that every time we've made a resolution, basically we fight because our humanity is so weak. We have this hope. We have a hope that's solid and centered in a God who does not change, in a God whose promises are consistent and faithful. So our passage for this morning, I want to read from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, verse 27, a well-known story about the man who builds, the wise man who builds his house. As I encourage you today to build and put into practice uh, the words of God so that when the storms come, we won't be blown away. Jesus said, therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 
The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house and fell with a great crash. <laughs> How many of you ever grew up in Sunday school with this song? The wise man built his house upon the rock. It was one of my favorite songs because when it came to that bit, the second verse, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. We were allowed to stand on our chairs. And the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. And then the house on the sand fell flat and we could jump off, this, off our chairs onto this wooden floor and make as much noise as we like. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, here's two resolutions for you in 2022. And I have two things to share with you this morning. Resolution number one. Won't you resolve to build only on the rock? Won't you at the start of this year, if you haven't already done so, recommit yourselves to building only upon the rock? You see, Jesus likens the person who hears and implements his words to a wise man who builds on this unshakable rock. My focus here is on the rock, building on the rock. It's no good just hearing and no good just trying to implement good principles. I mean, the Scripture's full of good principles. But it's no good just trying to do some of these things that are contained within the Word. More like it is a process of hearing, both hearing, which that word here means to listen or to obey. The wise man listens. The wise man obeys and does putting them into practice. In my translation says, puts them into practice. But the, the Greek word just means to perform, to do, to put into effect, to go ahead and do the stuff, building on the rock. See, our scriptures are not just a bunch of good psycho babble that repeat enough times, you know, it's going to change our lives or we're going to become better than anything else. There's a whole lot in the scripture, on the other hand, about God being a rock, our foundation, the firmness upon which we must build this house. And if you're not building, you're dead. If you're alive today, it means you're building. Now, maybe you're waiting for retirement. Maybe you're waiting for something to happen. But at the end of the day, we are all, in some sense, building and we're either building on the sand that's going to fail, or we are building on the rock. Some scriptures, for example, Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock. His words are perfect. All his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. How many of you last year accused God of doing wrong? So many went through terrible times last year, even to the losing of loved ones. I mean, how easy is it to say, God, you've done wrong. Where were you? But the rock of Scripture tells me this morning, His works are perfect. His ways are just. He's faithful, a God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. That's the rock that Jesus invites us, encourages us, commands us to build upon. 1 Samuel 2, 2, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Not the standard bank. Not the ruling party, not the political leader who's coming up and looks like they're going to solve our problems. 
not any institution, not the medical aid, not the experts in the whatever financial field, not the interest rates or anything else. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Friends, 2022, we simply need to recommit ourselves to make this resolution today. I'm going to build on the rock. Psalm 62, 6 and 7 says, He alone is my rock. Oh, sorry, I missed one. The Lord lives, 2 Samuel 22, 47. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, the rock, my Savior. Ah. Psalm 62, He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken my salvation, my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. What a resolution to make at the start of this year. I'm going to be a wise man. I'm going to build on the rock. I'm going to build on the rock, not the petrol price, not the politicians finally getting caught to account because that will never happen. You know, I'm going to build on the rock. Isaiah 26, 4, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord, Yahweh, is the rock eternal. This isn't a shifting sands thing. This isn't a rock that comes and goes. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The wise man, the one who hears and listens and obeys God's word, builds his house upon this rock. Now in the New Testament, we see this rock as Christ. Christ is the rock. 1 Corinthians 10, 4 says they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, talking about the people through the desert or in the desert. And that rock was Christ. He's our rock. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation, Paul writing, as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. Then he says, but each one should be careful how he builds. You see, there's so much today upon which we could build. We could build our moral code on Hollywood and land in a huge amount of trouble. We could build our honesty code upon the politicians and do like they do. <laughs> you know? We could do all sorts of things that we shouldn't do by looking at people and institutions. Paul says, no, no, no. Each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. Talking about the wrapping up of the ages. It will be revealed with fire and fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. Friends, our foundation, our rock, can only be Christ Jesus and his word. And when we are firmly rooted, the rains, the winds, the waves cannot derail us. Remember Peter and Jesus on that stormy sea and Jesus was walking on the water and Peter said, oh, no, tell me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out on Jesus' word. Then what happened? He started looking around at the wind and the waves and everything else, and he started to sink. If he had stayed on Jesus' word to come, he would have walked to Jesus on that water. And likewise for us this year, those winds and those waves, they cannot destroy us. If we have planted ourselves, if we have built ourselves firmly upon the rock, so many of us crumble at the earliest sign of trouble. And I want to tell you the reason for that is obvious. The foundation is all wrong. There's a foundation down here that's very wrong. Margaret built her flowers. She had, 
she had one of my work, one of the guys working here, build a wall with no foundation and planted flowers in there. I'm waiting for the day, Margaret, that wall just crumbles and falls down. It's got to. <laughs> we hear the truth. We don't put it into practice. We rely on others to get us through. We haven't taken the time and effort to build correctly. So the negative is usually much more believable than the positive because our minds are foundationed in sand instead of rock. Do you think 2022 is going to be easier than 2021? I've got news for you. It's not. And if this we end does eventually go i'm telling you there will be another thing coming up pretty shortly as well jesus said the times in the end was not going to get better it's going to get worse and the love of most said was going to grow cold the love of most is based upon the sand as soon as trouble comes as soon as something happens falling apart. And if I do, it means I'm foundationed on sand. I have not built my life upon the rock of ages. So let's resolve to build only upon him who's the same yesterday, today, and forever by placing ourselves under the sound of his voice through his word and applying that. Have you made that commitment that this year? You decided in your heart of hearts, I'm going to build upon the rock. Let's take 30 seconds and just pray together right now. Just in your heart of hearts, cement this truth in your life this morning. Lord, this year, from now, from today, I'm building my life upon the rock in Jesus' name. Okay, resolution number two. I want to resolve or have resolved to act only upon the truth. To act only upon the truth. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, these words of mine, Jesus said. Everyone who hears these words of mine, only the words of Jesus are truth. And that's what I want to act upon. Don't want to act upon the words of my pastor or that prophet or that apostle or that this or that the next thing. I want to act upon the words of Jesus. What he has said to me so clearly in his words. Unfortunately, the words of Jesus are often abused and blasphemed through deception. Jesus said, watch out when speaking about the end times, that no one deceives you. That is a sign of the end of the age, deception. Let me tell you, the church is full of deception. When we start taking what some of these people are doing, these people mostly who are fleecing followers, what we, when we take what they say and match it to the word of God, it just doesn't add up. And yet millions of people like that, following their books, just because they say Jesus is Lord does not mean that they're operating in the spirit of Christ. We need to be careful that we're not acting on the untruth that flies around the church today. For example, I don't know if any three days, that Zimbabwean prophet now, I'm not focusing on the Zimbabwean. I'm focusing on the one who calls himself a prophet who just spent 1.3 million rand on one meal at a Pretoria restaurant. Have you seen it in the news? It's been big. And continues to justify it. Stealing money from God's people who are deceived by teachings and blowing 1.3 million rand on a meal. Prophet, the prophet, prophet. 
And when he speaks, you know, people are listening. Can't deal. I want to issue a stern warning to the church this morning. To those who are sitting here, to those who are watching. 2022 is going to see an even greater deception in the church than ever before. The spirit of the Antichrist has been around from the beginning and continues to grow in fervor as we move towards the wrapping up of the ages. And as this deception invades the church more and more from within, so it's going to become more and more difficult to discern truth from error unless we are grounded upon the rock and know the words that Jesus spoke. And how do we know the words that Jesus spoke? You've got it all in here. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation at the end of the book. It's got to line up. The problem is this deception is so subtle, it's from within, you see. It's not the horned devil from the outside who's shouting and cursing and, and a danger to the church. It's the sh the wolf in sheep's clothing within the church, that's the danger to the church. It's the deception that comes from within. See, it sounds good and it feels good. It might even look good. But at the end of the day, it moves us away from Christ and onto man, man-centered stuff. Anything, listen carefully, anything that's aimed at making us feel good in church the music or the preaching or the whatever goes on in the context of a church, if it makes us feel good, if it puts the focus on us, on a man, on a pastor or any other fancy thing, if the emphasis goes upon money or success or wealth or health, any time man and his desires are exalted, it probably has its root in the Antichrist. Must. The more I study pe teachings of people like Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn and Jesse Duplantis, the more I listen, and I don't listen on deliberately, but when I look at the words of songs from people like Hill Hillsong and Bethel, the more I realize how deceived the body of Christ has become. There's a woman, I don't know if you've heard of her, her name is Kat Kerr. She's a prophetess. Amazing woman of God. She controlled weather. Now you laugh. It's an absolute joke. I watched hours of YouTubes of this person, to, uh, you know, commanding tornadoes, the last tornadoes that have hit America just in this last year, teaching believers, her and Jesse Duplantis, teaching the be believers how to, to redirect these uh, tornadoes and, and sort out the millibars and the pressure. And once you speak to that, then it dissipates. And every single one of them has got more and more angry and caused more, more, more destruction than ever before. And you know what the cheek of this all is? You go onto a web website for only $30 at a discounted price, you can get a weather controlling package. Only $30. 450 rand, 500 rand, you can buy a how to control the weather package. And Kat Kerr has a following second to none as a wonderful prophetess and all the rest of it. I just can't deal. See, the sovereignty of God is ultimately in the firing line. The sovereignty of God has been displaced subtly through teachings, replaced with a man-centered theology where God basically has to respond to the demands of those people who are naming and claiming. So what I say, God has to do. God doesn't have to do squat. God is God. He's sovereign over all. He is the eternal rock. He is the one upon whom we can build without ever worrying about failure. The church is so full of wacky 
apostles and prophets and all of these people naming and claiming and telling weird and wacky stories of heavenly visitations and personal meetings with Jesus. I mean, some of them, one would think that Jesus has to make an appointment with them to, to actually, you know, see them. It's disgusting. And I see these men and women preaching in the, the hordes, the tens of thousands of people Joel Osteen and all the rest of it. Tens of thousands of people drinking the stuff in. And there's no mention of the gospel. No mention of salvation through Christ Jesus. There's no mention of man's sin condition. I heard one guy saying yesterday, he said, to, to a very adoring population, uh, uh, a congregation, he said, you need to know this, that God loves you. He loves you so much. There is nothing that you, what did he say? You haven't done anything wrong. That's what he said. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's that God loves you so much that he sent Jesus. Man, I've got some good unsaved words for that rubbish. And the congregation just, they, they, they just sit there and they suck it all in. It's disgusting. It's disgusting that so many are deceived and so many allow themselves to be deceived simply because they have not listened to the words of Jesus and put them into practice by building their house on the rock. And the storms of life and death come and they get washed away. 1 Timothy Spirit clearly says that in the later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. That's not coming from outside the church. It's coming from inside the church. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. We need to resolve today to act only on the truth. Second Timothy, Paul writes, you, however, know about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, and sufferings, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecution I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from them all. It's not that he, the Apostle Paul, who wrote so much of the Bible, spoke to the weather and the weather listened to him. It's that the Lord rescued him from all of them. In fact, he says, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. If you're not prepared to be persecuted, don't follow Jesus. That's the bottom line. While evil men and impost imposters imposter, that's somebody who's standing in the pulpit and saying all of the wonderful things, but in actual fact, is just spewing out lies and deception for their personal gain. And the scary thing is they are so deceived, they don't even know that they deceived. And I'll read a scripture now. Verse 16 says, all scripture is God breathed. All scripture, that's all of Jesus' word. God breathed, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then he says in chapter 4, verse 1, in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season, out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience, careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. That's where we're at. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.9, the coming of the lawless will be in accordance with the works of Satan. Now, how does Satan come to us? He doesn't come as a horned creature. He comes as an angel of light. He looks good. He sounds good. In accordance with the works of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. These faith healers who fleece 
followers of millions and millions and millions. They can't provide any documented real-life miracles. Oh, lots of psychosomatic illnesses get cured. But if you start studying these people, I was watching something also. I've had lots of time this holiday to watch things. <laughs> but this one person was used in about four or five different people's crusades where they were healed of demon possession. Same person with this person and that person and that person. It seems like there are actors within this group of people that millions deceptively follow. They perish, and verse 10, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perished. They perish because they refused to love the truth. These words of mine and puts them into practice. We don't want to love the truth. We don't want to pursue the truth. They refuse to love the truth and be saved, verse 11. For this reason, for the reason that they refused to love the truth, they were too lazy to seek out the truth for themselves. They were much happier to believe the pastor or whoever. Verse 11 says, for this reason, God sends them. God sends them. God sends them. A powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Friends, that's what we're seeing. Counterfeit. Looks real. It sounds real. But it's just a fraud. John encourages us, dear friends, don't believe every spirit. Test the spirits. How do we test them? We test them against the word of God. Is this what God said or isn't it? And it's the whole counsel of God. It's not one little scripture here and one little scripture there that they use so eloquently to back up their filthy lives. Let's resolve in 2022 to test them against the word so our actions are correct, not flesh-driven to feather our own personal nests. So as we resolve to act upon the truth, this one who said in John 14, 6, Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let me give you some examples this morning. If it says, prepare your minds for action, what does it mean? It means this is a, a thinking thing. We need to be thinking about what we're reading. We need to be working through the word of God. We need to be understanding what he wants from us. We need to be prepared. So when the guy comes and says, if you give me $1,000, I'll ensure that a soul is saved. You recognize this guy is a deceiver, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Prepare your minds for actions. It says, watch out for false prophets. When last did you actually watch out for these false prophets? When you were watching CNN or reading through some of these people's books, blasphemy most of it. Watch out. Prepare your mind. Watch out. Let's think about some other things now. What did Jesus say? Love your enemies. How many of you today have enemies? Be honest with me now. Come on. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Some of my enemies don't even know I'm their enemy. <laughs> Jesus said, love your enemies. Lord, I want to do that. Pray for those who persecute you. Not raise up a posse and try and get back at that person. Pray for those who persecute you. Lord, that's what I want to do in 2022. Haven't done it so well up until now. But I resolve to do that. What about being kind to one another? Oh, did you smell that person sitting next to you this morning? Woo. No. What happened to kindness in the body of Christ? Are we kind to one another? Are we kind in our speech? Are we kind in our action? Carrying each other's burdens. No. Now, a lot of the time we don't know the burdens that people are carrying. But when we do, do we try and come alongside and help that person? Keep your lives free from the love of money. <laughs> Be
Be content with what you have. How's that one? Come on. Talk to me now. <laughs> Be content with what you have. Because what you have is what God has given you. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Yo, be joyful always. I can't deal with this heat. I can't deal with the heat. Be joyful always. I can't function in this heat. Be joyful always. Come home yesterday, open up a, an account from Buffalo City Municipality in which they're telling me to flip and register my water tanks. Never heard anything so ludicrous in my life. If you have a water tank in your garden now at home, you've got to register it. Ultimately, obviously, and pay for it. So now I must pay. I already pay tax on the roof coverage of my house. Now I must pay tax on the water in my tank that I'm getting from the roof. Be joyful always. See, this thing's not easy. But when we start recognizing that God ultimately is in charge, it becomes a little bit easier. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all, in all circumstances. Why? Because I know that my God is the rock. Don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or your body, what you will wear. Don't give up for yourself, treasures on earth. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Let us not give up meeting together. That means you don't give up coming to church. And there are lots who have given up meeting together. Well, for a variety of reasons. Now, many, it's legitimate. And I advise those who are at risk to remain at home. But there are lots who have given up for whatever reason. I've run out of time. But there are just so many that we can just think of. These are just some that I just breezed through my Bible. These are ones that, are, that got to me. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. God gave you two ears and one mouth. It means we should listen twice as much as we speak. Most of the time it's in reverse, and that's why nobody hears anybody else, because we're so busy talking. Be self-controlled. What? Don't conform to evil desires when you lived in ignorance. Be holy, because I am holy, and so we can go on and on. Let me conclude very quickly. Two New Year's resolutions worth keeping. Two New Year's resolutions I've set for myself. Resolve to build only upon the rock who is Christ and resolve to act upon the truth to do the word and not what everybody else says and does. Amen.